بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر اور تجھے بیفور موونگ انٹو دی پروپرٹیز اف ایل ٹی آئی سسٹمز وی ہیو دی پروپرٹیز اف کنوالوشن اپریٹر بیسیکلی تری نمبر دی سمپلر دی بیسیک دی ویل نون دی فرسٹ آف دیم is the commutative that the convolution operator is commutative what does this mean so you know that my y of n we wrote this was equal to x of n convolved with h of n so the convolution means what you know it better than me you can change the order of the operation which means that h of n convolved with x of n has the same output what did we do we said we know that y of n this is basically equal to k running from negative infinity to positive x of k into h of n minus k so this is also equal if you have it like this h of k x of n minus k <clears throat> fine similarly similarly this was for the discrete time we also have the same for continuous time and what would that be we know that y of t this is x of t convolved h of t so according to the commutative law this could be h of t convolved with x of t and what does it mean negative infinity to positive x of tau h of t minus tau d tau this is equal to the integration of h of tau with x of t minus tau d tau Now what does this mean basically? So this means that whatever is easier for you, you do that. In the previous example, all the examples that we have solved in now, we solved it on the basic method. We took x of t and we shifted h of t to, to that tau level or whatever. But if you have your h of tau, uh, uh, if you have h of t is difficult, you find it difficult in shifting. So you can also shift your x of tau. and you can keep in place the h of tau so this is what the commutative law states or another if you draw it pictorially from a block diagram this is just for visualizing if you want to get it much easier so what it says is that if you have your x of t and you give it to your lti system with the impulse response h of t the output of the system is y of t this we know right this is the left hand side of the equation so the right hand side says what that if you have an lti system now with impulse response x of t and you give it you know, the the input as h of t now the output of the system would be again y of t and these two y of t's are the same this is the commutative property the next is the the distributive yes the next is the distributive property and basically this this is distributive over addition so let me give you an update that the weather is extremely beautiful outside you you could be hearing the birds chirping anyways I will make these two videos and then go out for a walk. So, well, come back. Distributive says what? That if you have an input x of n, and now this has to be convolved with with such sort of an impulse response plus h two of n. so this would be equal if you do what x of n is first convolved with with h1 of n 
and then you add it with what that x of n is convolved with h 2 of n. <coughs> sorry these two will have you the same result that is wireframe now this i mentioned in the discrete time case we well, can have it in the continuous time. So can you write it for yourself or let me write it? Y of t, what did it say? X of t convolved H1 of t plus H2 of t. This would equal X of t convolved H1 of t plus X of t convolved h2 of t so now again this is the mathematical definition you've been seeing it from your class 5 6 5th 6 the distributive property this thing but what do we have to do it from the signal and system point of view so what do we do is that uh, the right hand side or the left hand side whatever you see first so let's say the left hand side is with the red color so I have a signal x of n. I have a signal x of n. This is feeded into an LTI system whose impulse response is the, is the sum of some two things which is h1 of n plus h2 of n. Now I don't know what is h1, what is h2. This is the sum of these two. And you have the output y of n. This is what the left hand side of the equation says. The right hand side says what? You have a signal x of n, this is your input, you convolve it with h1 of n. So I give it to an LTI system with impulse response h1 of n and I also give x of n to another system with impulse response h2 of n. And the final output is the sum of these two outputs. So now I add these two. And this is my final output y of n. So have a look. What did the distributive property do? The distributive property converted a parallel combination of two systems into a single system. What did it do? A parallel combination... to a single system and have a look to the impulse response the impulse response of the single system is what with impulse response equal to the sum of individual responses and I believe now you have got it. So the distributive property did what? We had a parallel combination of systems. The two systems having impulse responses H1 and H2. Now we have a single system with the impulse response equal to the sum of the individual responses that is H1 of N plus H2 of N. The two outputs Y of N are the same. That is the distributive law. Let's get into the final, the third. <coughs> the third is the associative law. Now in associative, what do we have? You know it very well. We have three operations. <coughs> if you have a signal X of N, Convolved with H1 of N, convolved with H2 of N. So this is equal to, let me write it first. The output is Y of N. Now, what do we have to do in this case? We have to change the orders. 
let's say this is the first order and this is the second order fine and this was again for the discrete time let me also mention it for the continuous time if you have x of p so you write it okay this would give you y of t so again if you have it in different orders let's say the first order is this one the second order is this one but but this is again something you know from the very basis the associative law what does this mean in the signal and system language so again we come to that so let's say considering the uh, the right hand side first consider the right hand side first so have a look this is a convolution so convolution is what an input signal and impulse response so what do you have it you have an input signal x of n this is your right hand side you have an impulse response of an lti system which is h1 of the output that you get is let's say w of n which is what of course it's x of n convolved with h1 of n and now have a look a second step convolution this one so now you have to give this particular as your input to another lti system having impulse response h2 of n which gives you the final output that is y of n which is equal to what the input to the system is w of n and convolved with the impulse response is h2 of n and now if you write so w of n is basically x of n convolved h1 of n and now the second convolved h2 of n so this is the signal system representation of the right hand side now if you talk about the left hand side so what does the left hand side says i have a signal x of n and it is convolved with a system uh, the, 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 it is uh, you know given to a system an lti system with this particular impulse response so this is my impulse response of this LTI system which is H1 of N convolve H2 of N. So what would I get at the output? I get at the output is Y of N which is what? Which is the given signal X of N and convolve with the impulse response which is this thing H1 of N convolve h2 of n these two are one and the same thing so have a look what did we do in this particular case we converted a cascaded systems cascaded systems to single system and what is the criteria the criteria is with impulse response equal to the sum of individual responses equal to the sum of individual responses if you have two systems connected in cascade you can replace it with a single system whose impulse response would be equal to the convolution of the individual responses over here I have mentioned it wrong equal to the convolution and similarly also in the continuous time you do it for yourself now let's say we move further into it let's say I use the commutative property I am going in the reverse order okay let's say using the commutative 
property. What do I have? My signal x of n is given to the system with impulse response now h2 convert h1 because they are the same thing so now my output y of n would again change order so x of n convert h2 of n convert h1 of n and now we know that this can be broken down into two systems so again from the district from the associative property from the what the associative property right or or i can i can say the cascaded systems definition i say cascaded or i also mention the associative now what do you have you would have this x of n would be it means that now it's first feed it into h2 and now this output is feed it to system with impulse response h1 you have the final answer n y of n and these two are the same so again we learn the point we learn the point and, and let me tell you that this is not only for two systems this could be for n number of systems could be for n number of systems any arbitrary number of systems right and and we also learn that in the cascaded form the order of the LTI system does not matter. In cascaded form, the order of LTI systems does not matter. Now what does this mean? So let's say I have a system Let's say I have an input x of t, I give it to one system, the output is given to second, it's given to third, it's given to fourth, finally I have my output. Now the same thing input, the same input, if I have, if I give it to system number four first, then to two, then to one, and then to three, and if I compute my output y of t, so this y of t would be exactly the same as this y of t. This is what we learned from this law. And that's all we learned. That's about the properties of the convolution operator. See in the next video where we start about the properties of the LTI systems. Till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.